Hi everyone, Laura K Buzz here, and before we get started with today's episode of Access Ability, I want to do a little bit of promo for something. I very rarely do this on this show, but do you like video games? Do you not like the video game industry? Do you have opinions about things that should maybe be better within big AAA companies and their executive structures in terms of how they, perhaps, let's just say in a purely fictional world, uh, mistreat their employees and swindle money out of their customers? Well then you might be interested in Who Hunts the Whale, a novel that myself and my wife Jane, who edits these videos, have been writing together for the last six months. There's a link in the video description. It's available for pre-order and Unbound. There's a bunch of cool rewards you can get. You can get a little swag bundle for Supremacy Software, the fictional AAA video game developer that the book does a lot of talking about. I can get a Skype call with myself and Jane where we can talk about the book and what it was like to write and all sorts of things. There's all sorts of little reward tiers you can look at. Go click the link in the video description. Check out Who Hunts the Whale, which is available for pre-order now. Uh, it's my first time making fiction, and it's my first time making a book with Jane, and I'm very excited about it. I really hope you check it out. Anyway, let's get on with an episode of Accessibility. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Accessibility. It's a show on YouTube where I talk about the video game industry, accessibility, and representation. Basically, how can we help more people to play games, and more people to see themselves in the games they play? When it comes to new advancements in video game accessibility, High Contrast Mode is one of the most interesting new additions I've seen made to games in several years in terms of ways to make them more accessible, and an accessibility solution that feels inherently tied to video games due to their real-time visual rendering nature. While games like the Batman Arkham series have used high contrast visuals to things like detective mode to enhance gameplay, it's really The Last of Us 2 that pushed forward the idea that this could be an accessibility feature in settings menus, and since then it has somewhat become a staple of first party Sony games. Sony is making amazing use of high contrast support in their first party console games, and this isn't in any way to suggest that they don't need it in their games. It's wonderful, it's great, we need it there, but there might be an additional part of this industry that is in even greater need of that technology that I really hope is able to start adopting it in the years to come. So today, on Access Ability, we're going to be talking about high contrast mode and why it as an accessibility setting might be particularly useful for handheld portable gaming. We're going to talk a little bit about what high contrast mode is, we're going to talk about what aspects of handheld gaming make it particularly well suited to something like high contrast mode, and we're going to talk about some of the unforeseen benefits that bringing high contrast mode to portable games could have for the wider industry. So what exactly is high contrast mode? Well, Sony's implementation is a customizable filter that turns unimportant elements of a game world grayscale while highlighting important elements in bright and easy to differentiate colours, making them easier for blind and partially sighted players to see, and easier to pass for players who struggle to prioritise sensory information. As an example of a possible implementation, you could have the player character highlighted in blue, enemies in red, and friendly NPCs in yellow, boss monsters could be in orange, and collectible pickups in green, for example. High contrast mode in Sony games often reduces the level of overall visual detail rendered in an environment. Lighting is simplified, non-character textures are reduced in complexity, and non-gameplay pivotal details such as debris on the floor of an environment are reduced. These changes help to ensure that details which do not contribute to gameplay progression are less frequently distracting. It's important that players where possible can customise the colour selections in high contrast mode, both to ensure that at a glance a given player makes the right connections between the colour they see and what they feel that should denote, but also to ensure that the setting remains useful for colourblind players too. So why do I think high contrast mode would be particularly useful as an addition to portable games on handheld consoles? Well, put simply, Smaller screens, with lower output resolutions and less powerful rendering hardware, push out less visual detail to players. If you're a blind or partially sighted player, 
playing an identical game on a handheld or on the TV, a handheld version is going to be more difficult to make out details on, and harder to play. With that smaller screen real estate, I can't help but think that bringing high contrast mode support to portable gaming could really help to make that space in particular more accessible as time goes forward. Taking that smaller image and highlighting with bold colours the important gameplay elements could really help to make games more easily viewable when seen on small screens. Additionally, for non-disabled users, high contrast mode could help make games easier to see and pass in bright environments, where screen glare makes details more difficult to make out, a common issue for people playing handhelds outside, and an implementation of the feature that reduces texture detail could help improve the frame rate of handheld games that have unlocked frame rates, for players willing to make that trade-off. Currently, Sony doesn't produce any gaming handhelds or develop any games designed for gaming handhelds, but I suspect if the PlayStation Vita was still in, in existence, if it was still getting Sony games made for it, if there was a Vita 2 that was out and we were seeing first party games on it, I don't think this would be a hypothetical discussion. I think that we'd be seeing these features enacted by Sony and we'd be able to see how much it helps. That said, this isn't entirely hypothetical. Sony isn't producing handheld games with high contrast mode, but if you've got a PlayStation Vita and a PS4, you can boot up Spider-Man Miles Morales or The Last of Us 2 and remote play it to your Vita, and I've done so, I've tested that out, and you know what? It makes it easier to tell what's going on on that small screen, to see detail, to understand what's happening, if you can turn on high contrast mode. It demonstrably is a thing. You, you can do this if you have a phone and you've got a PlayStation 5. You can have a look at a game on a small screen and see the difference that high contrast mode is making. I don't know whether Sony has any kind of pattern protection on their implementation of high contrast mode. I looked online and I couldn't see anywhere that they had a pattern, but I also couldn't see anywhere that they'd ever stepped forward and said, it's okay for the developers to implement this thing that we've sort of popularized in our games. I'd love to see Sony step forward and do something similar to what EA recently did with their patent pledge, and post something online that explicitly says, other game developers, it's okay for you to copy high contrast mode, it is okay for you to implement that in your own games because it's an accessibility feature that would benefit this industry. That's what I want to see. I want to see Sony take the step to say, hey, we're actively telling you it's okay for the rest of the industry to follow in our footsteps with this really cool thing that we've started pushing as a standard. In a perfect world, I would love to see someone from Sony step forward and actively say, it's okay for you to use these settings, we actively encourage it. I'd love for them to step forward and say, this is how it works, this is how we make it work, this is how you can implement it, we want other developers to do the same. I want to see developers across the industry hear that and go, yes, we know how it works, we can do this too. Particularly I want that for mobile developers, for portable developers, for handheld developers, because if they can get behind making high contrast mode something of a standard, it's really going to help accessibility for an entire genre of video games, an entire place and an entire way that we play video games.